In this video, we will be setting up our Sohead appliance to get it ready before we plug it into our network. This will ensure minimal downtime in our environment. We will begin with installing and setting up the Sohead appliance for the remote site. As I mentioned in the overview and design video, the Sohead appliance can either be a physical appliance, which is typically deployed for all size networks, or it can be a virtual appliance if you have the supported server hardware and the interface adapters installed. In our topology, we will be using the Stillhead virtual appliance, which will be installed on a Cisco UCS standalone server. And the server is running VMware ESXi version 5. So this virtual appliance will be installed as a virtual machine, which will emulate a physical appliance that will be plugged in line at each site. Now, if you are using a physical appliance for your environment, then you can skip this video and move on to the next deployment step in this video series. If you are using or considering the virtual appliance, then continue on. So right now we have our vSphere client open and connected to our Cisco UCS server. Now the server also has a dedicated four port network adapter installed. To view those details within the vSphere client, you need to go to the configuration tab and then from there go to basically network adapters which is basically right here and that will show you all network adapters and network ports that you have available on that server there you'll see several individual network ports and many of them will be used with our Stillhead appliances now if you are using the Stillhead virtual appliance and we talked a lot about this in the overview and design video presentation but it's recommended to use a dedicated port, a single port for the LAN and another port for the WAN ports on the appliance. It should not be shared with another interface that is used with other virtual machines. Each interface will then be used, will be associated to its own virtual switch or vSwitch, which you will see later on. It's also recommended that the interfaces be gigabit ethernet interfaces and not fast ethernet if you are considering that as the network adapter that you want to install. So in this video series, we will be installing both of our Stillhead appliances on this very same physical server, which is part of our lab environment. One will be for the remote site and the other will be for our headquarters office. Therefore, four of these interfaces will be used for the LAN and WAN interfaces for those two appliances. Again, if you are using the virtual appliance, then each site will have its own physical server that will have its own dedicated virtual machine and gigabit interfaces um, depicting what our design diagram shows. If you go to networking, which is right over here, we created several virtual switches on our Cisco UCS server or in VMware ESXi to be exact, which is shown right here. So this will show dedicated network interfaces being associated to its own virtual switch. So for example, we have network adapter VM NIC 6, which is associated to vSwitch 2 and so forth. So a virtual switch is what the interface on a virtual machine will be connected to uh, virtually. So on our ESX host, gigabit interfaces 6 and 7 will be used for the remote site Sohead appliance and gigabit interfaces four and five will be used for the headquarters Sohead appliance. You'll also see what is reflected as the LAN and the WAN ports on these appliances. So this information will become important when we start building the virtual machines for each Sohead appliance. Furthermore, for each of these virtual switches, you need to make sure that permissionless mode is enabled or selected as accept. The default is reject. This is required to be enabled on all virtual switches for in-path deployments. To view the status or to change it, let's go to property starting with vSwitch2, right up here. Okay, and that will show that permissionless mode is set to reject. We need to set this to be accept. So to do that, we're going to edit the properties for vSwitch right here and go to the security tab and set this to be accept and that's it we'll say okay okay so now the correct mode is selected so let's do the same thing for the other virtual switches 
So we'll go down and we'll do B switch three. We'll go to edit security tab and first option be accept. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and close this out and let's do the same now for the gateway router for B switch four. And set this to be accept. Say okay. All right, that's selected. And let's now do it for vSwitch 5. Say accept. Okay, confirm that this is reflected. There it is. And we're all done. The next step is to import the Stowahead OVA file which will build our Stowahead virtual appliance. This will be an OVA file provided by Riverbit. To import the OVA, you need to go to Deploy OVF Template here in the file. Okay, next you need to select the OVA file that you obtained from Riverbed. So let's browse and let's locate it. Okay, and this will be the BCX version. So select that particular file right here. Okay, and let's say next, go to the next page. And this will show a summary or a description page about what this is. Let's say um, next to continue on. And now we're going to define a name for this virtual appliance for how it will be listed on our ESX server. Again, we will be building out and configuring our remote site Stowahead appliance first. Therefore, the name for this virtual appliance that we will use will be, let's say R for remote site followed by capital W lowercase o for WAN optimization and the ID will be 01. And let's go ahead and say next. Okay, now if you have resource pools, then you can assign which resource pool the virtual appliance will be deployed to. And, but for us, we would not put this into any resource pool. So we will go ahead and continue on with our building. For the disk format, we will select then provision for our lab environment, but in a production environment, you want to make sure it is selected at thick provision, which is the default. So let's go ahead and say next to continue. The next page is the network mapping page, and this will define the interfaces on the Stowahead appliance and what port group or vSwitch group it will be mapped to on the ESX server. So for the WAN facing interface on our virtual appliance at the remote site, we will map it to the remote site WAN group, which is associated to its own dedicated interface. So that name will be RGR WAN. Here it is. Okay. For the LAN phasing interface on our virtual appliance at the remote site, we will map it to the remote site LAN group, which would be RGR LAN. For the primary interface, which is our management interface, this will be mapped to a shared interface for VLAN 101, which is our management network for all devices. So let's select the appropriate profile. Again, this primary interface is how we will be able to manage this appliance once it is online. Okay. Next, we will leave the aux mapping alone as it is not needed. This is basically like a console port that can allow us to connect like a modem or some kind of out of band solution that we can access the appliance remotely if we do not have network connectivity. But for us, we're gonna leave it at the default profile that is selected there. So we're done with all of our mapping. So let's go ahead and say next. Okay, and this page will show a summary of what will be built. So let's go ahead and say finish, which will go ahead and upload that OVA and build this virtual appliance. Before we power on the virtual appliance, let's confirm if the network adapters will connect at power on. So let's go to the virtual machine settings for that virtual appliance. Okay, and here we are. So let's go to the LAN interface that we selected right here. And that does show connect at power on. Let's confirm now for the WAN facing interface. And that also says the same thing. And let's go to the primary interface. And it also says connect at power on. Great. So now let's go ahead and close this out and let's power on our virtual appliance. 
and confirm that it is starting up by going to the console tab. And there it is. It is starting the process of building the virtual machine. When the Stillhead appliance is ready, you will see a login screen that looks something like this.